electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. I thought today I would talk about energy savings. It's on our mind, isn't it, all the time. It's if we're not trying to save grid energy with solar panels and home storage batteries, we're looking at efficiency, efficiency of devices, how to use less energy. One of the things that I'm often asked in the comments, etc., is about how do I manage with so little energy? I do tend to use a lot less energy than many other people. Um, there are three people in our household. We've got a four bedroom house. I don't live frugally. Um, we don't <laughs> skimp on things, but we're not extravagant either. And I don't like the idea of using things excessively. So we do do things like uh, when we put a wash on, we put it in the eco mode. We don't tend to use the longer cycles. We don't use a dishwasher. We don't use, um, a tumble dryer we tend to dry our washing on the line outside not just because it saves energy we just prefer it that way it works well for us that way but there are some tips that i think i can pass on um, some tips on how to save energy one of the things with me the quirks with me is that i do notice things i'm an analyst i do watch things my previous role was as an it manager and I used to specialize in performance and capacity planning. It was all about saving computer cycles, looking at problems where computers were running out of resource and how to resolve those problems. What people wanted to do was always throw a new computer at it, a new faster one, more RAM, more disk, more processing power. And what they missed in doing that is it never really solved the problem. The problem, the underlying problem was either the software or the usage of it in the background. So if the usage was bad, then it doesn't matter what equipment you throw at it, the usage will still be bad and it will probably get worse. I noticed the same with home appliances and energy. If you went around the house and changed every appliance you have for a more energy efficient device version of it, you might well actually end up using more energy because if the devices are using less, you become more comfortable. And if your usage is in a bad practice and in an excessive way or I don't want to sound too bad but just if you're using lots of energy and you're not going to change what you do then the device isn't automatically going to solve the problem it will initially probably re reduce your usage but in the long run it may well increase your usage so my advice is a combination of the two yes smarter devices uh, more efficient devices are definitely what you want devices like washing machines with nice eco wash cycles etc you do want those, but you've got to look at yourself. If you want to save energy, changing usage patterns is really the way to improve your energy efficiency. And then you can double that, etc., by having more energy efficient devices. That's my advice, that's the way to go. Look at what you do and how you do it and when you do it, and then use really good energy efficient devices as well. So what, what do I mean with that? Let's give, let's give you an example. It could be as simple as washing up um, using hot water. So if we have breakfast, 11sies, lunch, afternoon snacks and tea, and we were to wash up in each individual instance, then we are using more hot water doing that than we would if we save some of those crocs and wash them up collectively. So we could be more efficient. The same with the washing machine. If we put things in the washing machine to be washed every few days because we like nice fresh pillowcases, nice fresh linen, and we like our favorite shirt to be washed every other day, you know, whatever the reason is, we could adjust that and we could change it and we could add an extra day of usage on and not do the washing, reduce the number of wash cycles, reduce down the temperature of the wash from 40 degrees to 30 degrees try it. There are lots of things we can do to reduce the energy uses that we do and reduce the amount of whatever we're doing, whether it be heating, washing, drying, all those things. So the frequency of it and the timing of it and the volume of it. You know, how many times do we put a wash on and it's only half full because that's what we needed. We don't wait for those extra things. So it's the convenience factor of waiting more. If we spend more effort thinking about being efficient and trying to do those same tasks but in a more efficient way will save more energy and that's what i recommend one of the top tips that i can give you how many people are guilty of this just simply washing your hands but you're turning on the hot tap to wash your hands and you end up using cold water because the hot hasn't come through yet and just as the hot water starts to come through you've actually then finished washing your hands so that's not wasting hot water that's wasting kilowatt hours of electricity or 
gas or oil or whatever you heat your hot water with. In our example, if we turn the hot tap on, cold water will come out for about two liters worth. So two liters of water has to come out. Now it's not cold water wasted, that's hot water wasted. It's hot water coming out of the tank and replacing what was in the pipes. It hasn't come out of the tap yet, it's still sat in the pipes. And in that example of washing your hands, it's then gonna stay in the pipes and just dissipate the heat and need to be reheated at a later time. So just two liters, just washing your hands in cold water from the hot tap will waste two liters of hot water. You've got to heat back up to 60 degrees again. Every time you wash your hands, if you use that hot tap, you're wasting kilowatt hours of electricity. So for us, I looked at uh, the volume of water used for washing up. And as I said, drawing off the cold water to become hot takes two liters. Filling up just the bottom of the sink to do a small amount of washing up, a couple of plates and a couple of cups, etc. That's five liters of water. So seven in total to do an initial piece of washing up. If we had more washing up to do, then I often fill the sink to somewhere between eight and 10 liters of water in the sink, plus two for drawing off. So we are talking 10, 12 liters to do a bigger batch of washing up. One of the things that's really surprised me with the Mixergy tank that I've got, it shows you the drops in amount of hot water you have available. And doing a big load of washing up uses just about the same amount of hot water as taking a shower. Okay, I'm quick taking a shower, but we're talking 10, 12 liters of water. So it's quite surprising to me that, yes, I'm gonna have a shower once a day, but I might wash up three or four times a day. And I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that the washing up was using and wasting more hot water than actually taking a shower. Unless of course I have a really long indulgent shower. But you know, it's, it's that analyzing, that looking and realizing, you know, did you realize how much kilowatt hours you're wasting washing your hands from the hot tap or the washing up? It's those sort of things, changing your usage pattern, make sure you use the cold water tap just for washing your hands or aggregate your washing up to use less or try to use a little less water in the sink. I'm focusing on hot water because for us, hot water actually consumes quite a lot of energy, quite a lot of kilowatt hours. And when we're using oil, it's quite a lot of the oil usage as well. It's surprising how much energy heating all of that hot water is. If you've got a 200 liter hot water tank, it really is a lot of kilowatt hours. For us, I think the average is around four and a half kilowatt hours a day um, just for heating hot water. So that's a nice little chunk that we can save over a month if we nibble into that every single day. But I apply it to showers as well. If I know I'm gonna take a shower, the moment you turn it on, how many liters are you wasting, waiting for the hot water to come up to temperature? So for me, I like to, <laughs> we're getting personal here, aren't we? Uh, I like to take the shampoo, stick my head in the cold water and make sure I've started washing while the cold water is running so that I'm using less hot water overall. It's maximizing that water you're running off and not just wasting it. Um, that I find quite important. And also very successful in reducing the amount of energy you're using. Apply that same principle to cooking. How many people preheat their oven before you put anything in? Because the recipe says it has to be at a certain temperature before you put it in. I mean, apart from baking, you know, where it might be really critical what the actual temperature is at the moment you put that baking in. But how many people will notice the difference if you don't preheat your oven? I mean, I see it with Susan sometimes. She'll say she's preheating the oven, but then she'll go off and do something else and forget, and it'll be like 10 minutes the oven's been on and nothing's actually gone in because it's part of the routine of turning the oven on, getting it up to temperature before you carry on doing things. Changing that usage and not preheating or making sure that the preheat is much, much sooner will really help save some energy. And the same at the back end of cooking. I mean, obviously when you've got your oven up to 200 degree temperature, then it stays at 200 degrees for quite a while afterwards. So when you're cooking whatever in the oven and you've got within say five minutes of the end time, you can actually turn the oven off and let that residual heat in the oven do that final bit of cooking. You don't have to keep the oven going. It's all energy we can save and at the moment we're wasting. So again, it's not really the device and the efficiency, it's just being conscious of where you're wasting the heat. Do you really want the heat from the oven where you'll just open the oven door and let the heat come out into the room and be wasted? Or do you want to minimize the time that the oven's on? But that applies for everything, that applies um, if you're boiling things on the hob as well. 
Um, I often bring things up to the boil, then turn it off. It might take longer for that boiled water to heat and cook the item than what the prescribed time was in actual boiling 100 degree water, but you don't actually need the hob on for as long. You can use that residual heat to do the cooking. Same with an air fryer, the same with all those sort of things. You can use that residual heat. Leaving the item on less time will make it more efficient. I think this is one of the key things to think about that so many people I hear say, I just want to live my life. I just want to do what I want to do. I can afford the energy, so what does it matter? And that's the inefficient way of doing things. It's it's a very modern way of living, isn't it? That we want to consume because it makes it convenient for ourselves. We're not prepared to change. We're not prepared to compromise. We don't want to make any effort. But if you don't want to make any effort, you're not obviously going to save energy. So if you're here looking at energy savings, then this is why I go back to my point. You have to look at your usage and what can you change about how you do things and become more efficient because it does snowball. Once you start with one thing, it becomes easy and you don't notice you're actually doing it and then you'll do it with the next thing and the next thing. And ultimately you'll become more efficient naturally and it won't inconvenience you. It only seems like an inconvenience at the start. As I mentioned, one of the energy saving um, pieces of equipment we purchased was an air fryer. Um, my look at an air fryer, um, not because we use it for actual frying, but just cooking it, it's effectively just a small oven with a fan in it and the fan circulates more than even a fan oven. So it, it's a more intense cooking environment. It's a smaller enclosure, a smaller space to heat. So of course it's more efficient. Um, and it does seem to cook things quicker and use less energy. So air fryers are a great way of going. Instead of using a large oven to cook a small item, then an air fryer is brilliant for doing those sort of things. So that I do recommend. But the one thing that we purchased, I would say this is my biggest, best saving, um, not on the number of kilowatt hours it saves, but the most enjoyment factor I've had from making that saving, it was changing our television. We had a 41 inch um, LED television. In fact, it might not have been LED. I can't remember what actual style it was, but it was a full HD television, 41 inch, and it didn't have very good digital re um, receiver in it. So we purchased a Humax separate device to record live TV with and to have that TV signal come through. So we had a Humax device and the television. And at some point, um, it got to the point with Humax smart devices, you know, the catch-up TV programs that were on it, they didn't work anymore and they were out of date and I couldn't update them. So to get those apps, I had to make a change, buy a new Humax device or buy a new television. So I decided to get a television with all the right smart features so that I didn't need the Humax box. So we bought a nice little Toshiba television, <laughs> little, 55 inch, so we upped the size. The um, quality of the picture is massively improved. The sound is better. Um, everything is better about it and we don't need the Humax box. So now not only is the television using less watts on standby and less watts in usage than what the old television was, it's a better television and we don't have to have the Humax box. So we're making an energy saving with this new television, but also getting the enjoyment of having a better te television at all. And the amazing thing, 270 pounds, I can't believe it. In this day and age where everything is going up in price, everything seems expensive, I can still buy a brand new 55 inch television with all the right smart features and be really happy with it for 270 pounds. That really is a bargain for me and that really has pleased me being able to get energy efficiency, a higher quality and a low price. Very, very easy. So that's a no brainer for me. Swap out inefficient televisions and all these extra devices and get one that does everything you want with more quality for not a lot of money. The last thing I can mention uh, for efficiencies and what we do, we stopped using a kettle. So we actually binned our kettle and lo and behold, you know, we used to take it to the tap, fill it up or half fill it. And although it's got a gauge on it as to how much water was in it, we never really used to use it accurately. It never seemed to be empty when we use it. Of course, it was full of lime scale as well. We've got hard water area here. So there was always lime scale at the bottom. So you always wanted to have more water in than what you needed because obviously you didn't want the last dregs to come out with all the lime scale in it. Now instead, we actually boil it in a pan on the hob, which sort of sounds like it's going backward and it's a bit of an old way of doing things but there's multiple reasons why it seems better. One, it's an induction hob, so it actually uses less energy to heat the same amount of water. 
two, it's easier to measure. Um, I don't know why, because it's got the same sort of gauge on the edge and uh, as the kettle does, but we seem to be able to use all of the water all the way down to the bottom as well. The lime scale does coat the bottom of the pan, but doesn't seem to pour out, etc. So we do seem to be able to use just the amount of water we want. And boiling water, of course, don't boil more than you need. The more you do that, the more water you've got left in whatever your boiling device is, that's wasted energy every time. So we're not obsessed that I basically fill two cups with water and pour the water into the pan to boil just the exact amount, but we've got more accurate about how much water we use so we don't boil more than we need. The good thing about the induction hob as well is it's not two kilowatts or more, it's smaller. So we can boil the hot water at 500 watts, 800 watts, 1300 watts. So I can vary that depending on how much solar we have. So if we're on a low solar day, I might just put the pan on number eight and that would be eight or 900 watts. But if we've got on a really good solar day and we've got lots spare, I can whack it on the highest one at 1.3 kilowatts. So because you've got that scalability, you can adjust your solar and it's more efficient. You're less likely to draw from the battery. You're less likely to draw from the grid. So that's not everything we do, but I just wanted to have a short conversation about some of the things we do and some of the things that I've noticed about how to be efficient and how we keep our usage quite low. And uh, yeah, I'm super proud of how little we spend on energy. It's not because I'm tight. It's just because I, I like being efficient. Obviously we do other things for efficiency, but I wanted to talk about some of the top things and my top thoughts about how you can be efficient. There's, there's a lot of pride, I suppose, in not using a lot of grid energy and keeping your energy bills low. And I don't understand people that um, go the opposite way around and want to say, you know, look how many thousands of pounds I spend on energy, um, being proud of the waste. It's almost as if they know they're wasteful. They know they're not doing the right thing, but rather than going, I shouldn't be doing it, They'd rather big it up as if it's you know a really good thing, a badge of honor, and I really can't get that. We should all try to cut our energy usage. We should all be driving a little bit slower, using less fuel. We should all be cooking less and washing less and using less gas at home and oil and all, all of those things. It's, it's a scarce resource. And if we haven't learned yet, when are we gonna learn? When is our society gonna learn that energy is expensive? It's not something we can take for granted and we should use it sparingly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this makes sense. And I hope some of these things that I've talked about help you be more efficient. Let's hope so. If I come across any more that I think I should share with you, I'll do that as well. Let me know in the comments if you think this was a good idea, sharing energy efficiency tips and making that a discussion point. Let me know in the comments as well what you do to uh, keep those energy bills low. I'd really like to hear some great ideas and share them. Thank you so much for watching. As always, take care. See you again soon. More videos. Bye for now.